The Midnight Library by Kazuno Kuhara. Once there was a library that opened only at night. A little librarian worked there with her three assistant owls. Every night, animals came to the library from all over town, and the little librarian and her three assistant owls helped each and every one find a perfect book. The library was always busy, but it was also a peaceful and quiet place. Until one night when... Bang! Crash! A band of squirrels began to play music. Shh! said the little librarian. Please be quiet in the reading room. We're sorry, said the squirrels, but we're trying to find a good song for our next concert. Then follow me, said the little librarian, and she showed the squirrels to the activity room. Silence settled upon the library once more, while the band played their instruments as loud as they liked. Later that night, the little librarian was busy putting books away when suddenly it started to rain. Oh dear, said the little librarian, there must be a hole in the roof. But sitting on top of a bookshelf, she found a wolf, and she was crying so much her tears fell like rain. What's the matter, Miss Wolf? asked the little librarian. Something very sad happened in my story and I can't read it anymore, replied the wolf. Please don't cry, said the little librarian, and she took Miss Wolf to the storytelling corner. They read the book together until gradually the wolf began to smile. The librarian and her assistants knew the story had a very happy ending. Ding, ding, the bell rang out as the sun came up. It was time for everyone to go home. One by one, the animals left the midnight library. All except one new visitor. A tortoise reading slowly in a corner, and he would not move. I must stay until I finish reading this book, said the tortoise. I only have 500 pages left. Let us make you a library card, said the little librarian. Then you can borrow this book and take it home with you. How wonderful, said the tortoise. And how lucky I am. Bye, Mr. Tortoise. Have a good day. The three owls and the little librarian gave the empty library a good dust and a sweep. Then finally, it was time to find one last book, a very special book, a book of bedtime stories for three sleepy owls. Sleep tight. The Fantastic Flying Books of Mr. Morris Lesmore by William Joyce. Morris Lesmore loved words. He loved stories. He loved books. His life was a book of his own writing, one orderly page after another. He would open it every morning and write of his joys and sorrows, of all that he knew and everything that he hoped for. But every story has its upsets. One day the sky darkened, the winds blew and blew.
until everything Morris knew was scattered, even the words of his book. He didn't know what to do or which way to go, so he began to wander and wander. Then a happy bit of happenstance came his way. Rather than looking down as it had become his habit, Morris Lesmore looked up. Drifting through the sky above him, Morris saw a lovely lady. She was being pulled along by a festive squadron of flying books. Morris wondered if his book could fly, but it couldn't. It would only fall to the ground with a depressing thud. The flying lady knew Morris simply needed a good story, so she sent him her favorite. The book was an amiable fellow and urged Morris to follow him. The book led him to an extraordinary building where many books apparently nested. Morris slowly walked inside and discovered the most mysterious and inviting room he had ever seen. It was filled with the fluttering of countless pages and Morris could hear the faint chatter of a thousand different stories as if each book was whispering an invitation to adventure. Then his new friend flew up to him and landed on his arm. It held itself open as if hoping to be read. The room rustled to life, and so Morris's life among the books began. Morris tried to keep the books in some sort of order, but they always mixed themselves up. The tragedies needed cheering up and would visit with the comedies, the encyclopedias, weary of facts would relax with the comic books and fictions. All in all, it was an agreeable jumble. Morris found great satisfaction in caring for the books, gently fixing those with fragile bindings and unfolding the dog-eared pages of others. Sometimes, Morris would become lost in a book and scarcely emerge for days. Morris liked to share the books with others. Sometimes it was a favorite that everyone loved and other times he found a lonely little volume whose tale was seldom told. Everyone's story matters, said Morris, and all the books agreed. At night, after all the stories that needed telling had been told and everyone had settled down to their proper places on the shelves, the great big dictionary would get in the last word. Then, Morris Lesmore would once again write in his own book. He wrote of his joys and sorrows, of all that he knew, and everything that he hoped for. The days passed, and so did the months. And then years, and years. And Morris Lesmore became stooped and crinkled. But the books never changed. Their stories stayed the same. Now his old friends took care of him the way he had once cared for them, and they read themselves to him each night. Then one day he filled the last page in his book. He looked up and said with a bittersweet sigh, I guess it's time for me to move on. The books were sorry, but they understood. Morris put on his hat and took his cane. As he went to the door, he turned and smiled, then waved goodbye. I'll carry you all in here, he said, and pointed to his heart. The books waved their pages, and Morris Lesmore flew away. And as he flew, he changed back to the way he'd been that long ago day when they'd all first met. The books were quiet for a while, then they noticed that Morris Lesmore had left something behind. It's his book, said his oldest friend. Inside was Morris's story, all of his joys and sorrows, all that he knew, 
and everything that he hoped for. Then the books heard a small, expectant sound. There in the doorway was a little girl. She looked around with wonder. Then something fantastic happened. Morris Lesmore's book flew up to her and opened its pages. The girl began to read. And so our story ends as it began with the opening of a book.